All right, Di, that takes us to Article 3, and it's really a tox job. It and is. And I'm so glad you got it. Yeah, and well, I I'll get no, back I got, at you I later. I get the punishment later. I'll get but, back at you later. But have a tox paper and tell oh, us about all the great evidence. It's wonderful. So this is <laughs> Treatment for Calcium Channel Blocker Poisoning, a Systematic Review. And the title had me all excited. So this is by St. Ange et al. Um, this is November 2014, Clinical Toxicology, which is the first sign that this may not be helpful to me as an emergency physician. So, so th the title sounds like you're going to be able to go to the paper and say, oh, great, I have a calcium channel blocker overdose. I'm going to give this and this, and it's going to be all better. Not so much. So let's, and they are important overdoses, right? They These are, are big killers of really kids. important. Uh, so calcium channel blockers and beta blockers in terms of cardiotoxicity are still remain at the top of the point. Oh, horrendous. We just had a list. case of this. A guy braided down to, they braided him down to 30. It wasn't an overdose. It was actually given by docs. It was for a pre well, it a is test. an overdose. It's a, a little test pre They beta, beta block and calcium channel blockered him to a heart rate of 30 and a blood pressure of 40. I love it when they His do. heart was slow for the study, though. Yeah. For the study. But I love it when you do both the calcium channel blocker and the beta blocker, because if you block everything, you get nothing. Well, then that was pretty <laughs> darn close. So we, in fact, we dealt with all of these drugs we're going to talk about here and try to treat this guy. So this is a systematic review, and it was published in ClinTox. The goal of this paper was to document and characterize what the evidence is to facilitate practice guideline development. That's really important. So this is the let's gather what's out there and see if we can figure out what we need to study to figure out what we need to then gather to then make a practice guideline. So but this that takes is, you to the standard tox joke, which is there is no evidence in tox because it's all case reports. Well, and here we go. So, and what they looked at when they try, what they're trying to find is, thank God, improved human dynamics and a patient-oriented outcome, which is mortality. So the primary outcome is what worked to save lives and what worked to help somebody's blood pressure and heart rate. And then they had a whole bunch of secondary outcomes that were kind of in there. But again, this is not to guide your practice specifically. It's to help develop a guideline. And you'll see why I mentioned that as we go through this. So... They list the eligibility criteria. They wanted randomized controlled trials. They wanted it to be patient oriented. They wanted it to be human studies. That and when they went through all of the literature, there were no no <laughs> studies that met eligibility criteria. That I, they I love. I, why did why did they just stop there? I know they should say we're done. What, now because now we're going to devolve into expert recommendations, and we're going to have to get tested on some paper that is re just really hard to figure out what the what the take home point is on this. Yeah, you need that T shirt. I make shit up. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. There you go. So the only interventions that were well studied in all the stuff that they went through here were high dose insulin and extracorporeal extracorporeal life support. Those are the only things that in humans were well studied. That didn't stop them, however. They mentioned a whole lot of information. And I'll tell you, in this particular paper, there are eight, like eight graph pages, tables eight of pages of the details of summaries of all of the papers. And some were human, and some were animal, and some were controlled, and some weren't. And so, oh my gosh, it's, it's some were case reports. Oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. Think of the animals, the poor so, animals. So to try to kind of get this to something that you might be able to use or understand, and I am not even sure what they're going to ask question-wise on this, but I'm going to take a shot at it. Let's start with GI contamination. You get it, I'm sure. Yeah, so GI decontamination, it was all case series stuff, and they said, we can't say it does anything. And this just goes with everything else we know in that. So as far as calcium channel blockers, they're not any special, more special than anything right. else. It all depends on it how, all you depends know, the, on the, the age-old problem with decontamination is the drugs have a head start because they lot. were taken first. And your stomach and gets no one, up a fast. And no one, takes, no one has charcoal before their calcium channel blocker overdose. No. Now, high-dose insulin, which is dosed as one unit per kilogram as a bolus, dose. gigantic dose, followed by a half to two units per kilogram per hour as an infusion. That's high-dose insulin. And that's actually something you should know about in your practice because there are certain things that this works for. And calcium channel blocker poisoning is one of the times that we consider using it. In human studies, it did improve human dynamics. So it helped your blood pressure. So that part, part but... And it caused the expected problems. It did what we thought it would do. Which is your sugar can go into the dumper and you as can... As can your, cal as your, can, your yeah. potassium. So yeah. those can both go down. So high dose insulin may be so much. How about calcium? I mean, if it's a calcium channel blocker, why not just give calcium? Well, animal studies looked kind of good. And actually, if I remember, that was cat studies they did initially on all of this stuff. But human and human studies and case series have variable results. And there's and fortunately, it's not a lot of downside. Mm -hmm. So it's not a terrible thing to give, but don't expect a lot. And they say the dose is one to five Which grams. Is pretty big dose. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and it does make people kind of flushed when you push this. So you have to be a little bit yeah. careful not to push it, to kind of drip it. And we have some experience with pre-treating people before you right. give them things. In but the this old is days, after the fact. This is after the fact. Yeah. I think pre-treatment works better than after the fact. I That's agree. That's my own personal 
Well, and I think that at least it. in the cat studies, that's and what as it long said. as it's not based on data, my personal two cents is Which worth is very at least important. as much as oh, everything least, they were. At least, at least. Now, vasopressors. There are animal and human studies, and they go through each vasopressor, and it's a little bit conflicting in this part of the paper with the end of the paper. But I'll give you sort of the two, and then I'll tell tell you the take home at, at the end. So, vasopressin is felt to be potentially harmful. So va that's so I, vasopressin is like a no, a flat out no. Epi may improve cardiac output. Dopamine and norepi improved survival in animals and hemodynamics in animals, but the results were somewhat inconsistent. And then isoprel and atropine, again, inconsistent results. So of all of them, epi probably had the best profile. And interestingly, this guy with the bradycardia hypotension, the only thing he responded to was epi, which was fascinating. So epi might have a role, maybe dopamine and norepi. We'll come back to that And this as well. devolves into all the pressure talks in every other yeah, setting, all that, which, right. which to you know, the, the, the sort of quote little... I like is no presser has ever been proven superior to any other presser with True. any important outcome on any disease. Although, although I think that, <laughs> that it definitely in sepsis. Um, but this, you're getting into a specific cause of I hypotension, gotcha. so I just wonder I if there might the be one. I still think the any disease part of that statement is true. mostly true. Probably true. Now, glucagon, which all of us kind of grab for all this stuff all the time, animal studies say it helps your heart rate and your cardiac output, but human studies, only one of three human studies showed any improvement, and it definitely causes vomiting and your sugar can go up. Especially because you're using bigger doses again, right. and so when you and mail on people sick. with glucagon, right. they will your. So it's not you. overwhelmingly positive, and in fact, it's not very positive at all. So even though it's something we grab, it's Although not very helpful. Although I will say that in, in lesser cases, when I have someone who's not really an overdose, but who has an inadvertent um, beta blocker, bradycardia, mm -hmm. you know, not an overdose, but they're taking their usual stuff and now they're slow, I have been impressed with glucagon's ability to, to kind of bring their vitals back into a place. That's not, not a topic addressed here. This right. is a totally different thing. But so, I, you know, I, I, there is some outside evidence in non-overdose cases that you might get somewhere. Beta blocker. Yeah. yeah. Beta blockers. Yeah. 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 So this one's a not, not so much in calcium channel blocker. Now, lipid emulsion therapy, make them all greasy inside. Um, animal studies basically so, show if it's an IV overdose. A drug sink. Right. So then, then you can consider sucking the drug into the sort of lipid lipid pool that you're putting in there. Um, but oral ingestions, it didn't seem to have any effect. And da human data, not... There's nothing really out there that's very. But helpful. everyone loves it and but seems to know like about it. The and they thing, keep talking about it. It's the thing, but but at least in this paper, which looks at everything they could find out there, um, human data not so much. They mentioned, I like to call it globulization. <laughs> fat, fat, drug, drug globulization. globulization. Now, two other sort of drugs on the fringe for aminopyridine and levosovaceva, whatever, don't work. So I'm not even going to mention them because we'll skip those because they don't work. That was good because I didn't know what they were anyway. Yeah, me either. I looked them up. Um, extracorporeal <laughs> life support. They're, RECMO. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like to call RECMO. it RECMO, RECMO for resuscitative extracorporeal there you go. membrane oxygenation. I like RECMO. It's easier than saying extracorporeal. So we're right. going to call it RECMO from now on. And so. RECMO is specifically when we're going to bring it to bear in the emergency room. And th I think this is a place where if you had a young person with an overdose and you could you know, this is really a therapeutic bridge. I need to keep their heart and stuff moving and let them metabolize this drug off over a period mm -hmm. of time. I think it makes good sense. It does. And it does, and the papers do so, show some survival benefit and the people that are really, really sick or actually dead. But you've got to start moving early, right? You mm -hmm. can't mobilize these resources in most hospitals. I mean, there are some hospitals that have gotten good at this. But for most of us, you it's know, you got to get deal. a transfusionist, you got to get the catheters in, you need it. You often need a surgeon to help you with that if you're not familiar with it. Now, fortunately, in some of these overdoses, and I remember I was working the other day and somebody came in who'd taken 150 tablets of a beta blocker, mm. again, not a calcium channel blocker, which is what this is about. But I was like, all right, we have some time. Let's start mobilizing these teams. And unfortunately, as is often the case with overdose histories, her history was not true. And oh. she never Brady down. And she, oh. didn't get the, she didn't get the intervention. She never got Brady. She never got hypotensive. Oh. They were all standing by like, what up? Oh. But you They're all the looking right at thing. me like, why you, you did the right thing. why you call us? I was you like, well, right. uh, she said 150. <laughs> <laughs> So Recmo, consider it in calcium channel blocker poisoning. Sure. Now there's a downside. You know, limbs can be lost with it's all invasive. of this, but it's, big it's stuff. better than being dead. So I, so they recommend this. Pacemakers don't capture terribly well, so yeah. it's frustrating as all get out. But you got somebody really bradycardic, and it just doesn't work. So. And so they don't work transthoracic often, and then you go even to the past the pacer, and they still don't capture. Mm -mm. No. Nope. So pacemakers, not so much. Not so much. So if you want, so they get now to summarize. So that's all the individual like categories and yep. what the papers say. Then and they summarize an overall to improve mortality, high dose insulin followed by vasopressors has a survival benefit. 
Only in humans, they said the only thing that reduced mortality was calcium and dopamine, which is interesting. If you go back, this is where that I get not what the, the, confused the table in this said, paper. Yeah. It's not what the table said. It's not what the data said earlier. But they say in their summary results, and this is where they did the, all the statistical crunching bit, that calcium and dopamine are associated with reduced mortality. But RECMO, definitely. Okay, cardiac arrest, refractory shock, RECMO. So RECMO, high-dose insulin with vasopressors, maybe calcium and dopamine are for mortality. For hemodynamics, and again, mortality, I really care about. Hemodynamics is maybe not as important. It makes us feel better. It may not save the patient, but high-dose insulin... But these patients get horrific shock they with do. end organ failure. They do. So, hi, so hi, we, we, yeah. we talk a lot about shock where the shock is not the type of thing, you know, where they get transient bumps in their liver functions or their renal functions or whatever, and they recover from that often without substantial mm -hmm. long-term effect. The, the bradycardia and hypotension associated with these produces... Real end organ failure. True, true. Like so, durable, so with that being permanent. said, high dose insulin is something that does seem to improve hemodynamics and calcium may as well, but don't expect a lot because the response to that is very, very, was variable. RECMO again, this is where I have Billy calling in these people is important. And then one of those weird drugs that we mentioned worked in two patients. Two patients means nothing to me, so I just put it on there because <laughs> I love it's it. in worked there. Worked in two patients. Two patients, but they mentioned mm. it. Functional outcomes, they do mention a little bit as well. It's basically RECMO is the best thing for functional outcome. You want somebody walking, talking, and getting out of here after having a poisoning with calcium channel blockers. That's the thing that's probably the biggest bang for your buck. So, And to, that's yeah. also the other thing I have to say about RECMO, because some of these are PEDS overdoses, right? It's yeah, in the they top get into of the it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the, the, both of these, you know, calcium channel blockers are cer certainly in the two to three pills can kill yep. category. Um, and getting these people ECMO is... You know, it comes guys. with its whole mm -hmm. set of challenges. Now, in the neonatal unit, obviously, they know a lot about this because they've done it for kids with no lungs. Right. Um, so you have to sort of look. Now, the other question that comes up, which the paper doesn't touch on at all, let's say you're in a community hospital with a kid who's got a, an overdose who's you're worried is going to get worse and worse. Is this something that you would higher level of care transfer to a place that had the ability to do this? My thoughts are yes. But I don't. Really, I have no data on which to 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 follow that up with or no. That might be worth talking to a toxicologist about, though, to help give you some right. guidance. I'd, I'd want to do it with a poison center on right. my back. And and when we talk about both of these tox papers that we're doing here, you know, these are not times to be doing making all these decisions alone. Get a toxicologist. Well, these people are so board. sick. They're so sick. I mean, we have a toxicologist on our staff, and we still called poison control on the case yeah. that we had. So to to try to put it all together, um, as far as put it all together, put it all together. High dose insulin. Improves hemodynamics, lowers mortality, but has some risks. Okay, evidence isn't so great. RECMO improves survival. A little bit of risk of losing a limb or so. Um, evidence isn't super strong, but that's so high-dose insulin and RECMO, definitely. Calcium, dopamine, epi, and norepi may improve hemodynamics and may improve survival. Not a lot of severe side effects, but the evidence on this is really weak. So that's... Well, we, we said that right at the beginning. No right. papers were found. Exactly. <laughs> there are a couple of the other drugs that might help in animals, but we're going to skip that. Lipid emulsions, one, um, hemodynamics in animals, not so much in humans. But people love it, and they're doing it. They are. And then all of the other treatments that are out there, like the glucagon and all that stuff, not so much. doesn't really help. So basically, RECMO, high-dose insulin... And then we trickle down to all the rest of the stuff. And very high-dose insulin. Yes. Like, like anxiety-provoking high-dose insulin. Right. So, so the thing about this paper, and I apologize for this seeming a little bit um, contradictory, but the paper internally is contradictory in what it says, what helps and what doesn't. So I don't think, honestly, that the ABEM item writers are going to – I think we'll get one question out of this, maybe, and it's going to be RECMO. That it's basically the – I can't That's imagine. That's your prediction? That's all my right. prediction. My prediction is they're going to go for the ECMO. I think they're going to go for the high-dose insulin. Well, that's yeah, those are both in there. So.